Okay, in this video, I'm going to talk to you about 2020 paper one, question one. In the first part of this question, we're given the function f of x equals x squared plus 5x plus p. We're asked to find the value of p for which x plus 3 is a factor of the function. Now, there are two different ways of doing this. If x plus 3 is a factor, what you could do is you could carry out long division. You could divide x plus 3 into the quadratic and then let your remainder equal to 0. However, that's far more difficult than the second alternative, which is the way I'm doing it. It's way easier if you're given the factor to convert it into a root. If x plus 3 equals 0 is a factor, you subtract 3 from both sides, that means x equals minus 3 is a root. That means that when you sub in x equals minus 3, you can let the whole thing equal to 0. So I subbed in x equals minus 3, I let the whole thing equal to 0. It's easy enough and you end up with p is equal to 6. Okay, in part b, we're asked to find the value of p for which the roots differ by 3. Now, there are a couple of different ways of doing this, and I want to show you what, in, as far as I'm concerned, is the most straightforward way of doing it. I know the function is x squared plus 5x plus p, and I, I need to come up with two different roots. So the roots I've decided to come up with are y and y plus 3. I know that the roots of the quadratic differ by 3. So I just made up, right, one of the roots is y. Then the other root is just 3 bigger than that one. So my goal now is to try and find a value for y. If I can find a value for y, I'll work out what each of the roots are, and then I'll be able to work out a value for p. So first thing we need to do is find out what the roots are. Now, one way of doing this question is if you know x equals y is a root, you subtract y from both sides and you get x minus y is a factor. If you know x equals y plus 3 is a root, you bring both of the, the y plus 3 to the other side and you get x minus y minus 3 is a factor. If you multiply the two factors by each other, you'll get the quadratic. You can do it by like that way. It's, much, it's, it's a bit trickier than the way I'm about to show you, but if you're more comfortable doing it like that, then it's worth exploring. However, as far as I'm concerned, the easiest way to do this question is a bit of theory that I went through in the complex numbers in the eighth tutorial on complex numbers. In the eighth tutorial on complex numbers, I mentioned how every single quadratic equation can be written in the form of x squared minus x times the sum of the roots plus the product of the roots. So let's consider this now. If every quadratic can be written in the form x squared minus x times the sum plus the product of the roots, I'm saying here that the roots are y and y plus 3. So first thing I want to do is work out what is the sum of the roots. The sum means you add them together. If I add these two roots together, I get y plus y plus 3. That adds up to 2y plus 3. Product means you multiply them by each other. So I'm saying one of the roots is y, the other one is y plus 3. If I multiply them by each other, I'm going to get y squared plus 3y. So I know that this quadratic, if it has roots of y and y plus 3, it can be written as x squared minus x times the sum of the roots plus the product of the roots. I want you to notice that now I have enough information to actually find a value for y. Because I know that this quadratic is actually x squared plus 5x plus p. Or in other words, I know that the coefficient of x is a 5. The coefficient of x is plus 5. In this scenario, if a quadratic has roots of y and y plus 3, then the coefficient of x in this case is minus times 2y plus 3. So based on these roots, the coefficient is minus times 2y plus 3. But in the function given, I know that the coefficient of x is actually 5. So I can let this equal to 5, and now I'm going to be able to solve and find a value for y. So if I do that, I simply get minus 2y minus 3 equals 5. Now I just want to isolate my y. So I get minus 2y is equal to 8, so y is equal to minus 4. So I actually now know that y is minus 4. So that means one of the roots of the quadratic is minus 4. And the other root is, y, is whatever the pre first root was plus 3. If I add 3 to my original root, minus 4 plus 3 is minus 1. So I can actually say that x equals minus 4 and x equals minus 1 must be the roots of this quadratic. Now again, there are a load of different ways of doing this. I could use the fact that y equals minus 4, and I could sub in here y squared plus 3y, 
If I subbed in minus 4, I would end up with the coefficient at the end, I'd end up with my p. However, again, I want to do it a different way. Because there's loads of different ways of doing this, I'm doing it what I would consider the easiest way to do this quadratic. I've now worked out the roots are minus 4 and minus 1, which means the corresponding factors are x plus 4 and x plus 1. I know that if I multiply x plus 4 by x plus 1, I'll get the original quadratic. If you multiply this out, it's the first thing in the first bracket by the second bracket, second thing in the first bracket by the second bracket. And if I multiply it out, I'm going to get x squared plus 5x plus 4. Now obviously I'm skipping lines there, but that's what I would have ended up with. So in fact, in this case, my quadratic would be x squared plus 5x plus 4. So the only way that a quadratic equation could have a coefficient of 5 in front of the x and factors that differ by 3 is if the constant at the end is a plus 4. So my final answer here is that p is equal to plus 4. Okay, the theory behind a part 3 of this question can be found on the website in the ninth tutorial in algebra. So if you go to algebra 9, you'll see the theory behind what we're going to explore in a part 3. In a part 3, we're asked to find the values, the two values of p for which the function does not cross the x-axis. If a quadratic doesn't cross the x-axis, that means that it turns either the turning point, it has a minimum point above the x-axis, or it has a maximum point below the x-axis. It looks like one of these. And it means that the quadratic has no real roots. If a quadratic equation has no real roots, the very first thing that should come into your mind is b squared minus 4ac is less than 0. If a quadratic has no real roots, the discriminant is negative. So think of your minus b formula here. The a is the coefficient of x squared, in this case 1. b is the coefficient of x, in this case 5. c is the constant at the end, in this case p, what I'm looking for. And if I sub in, I get 5 squared minus 4 times 1 times p is less than 0. The maths is quite straightforward, and you end up with p is greater than 6.25. But the question said, find the two values of p. This p greater than 6.25 is a range of values. But when you get to here, you should look back at the very start of the question. It told me that p is an element of z. p being an element of z, that means it's an integer. And integers are whole numbers, any whole numbers, positive, negative, or zero. It also said that p has to be between minus 3 and 8. There are only two integers that are greater than 6.25, but that are within this range. The only two int integers within this, this range greater than 6.25 are 7 and 8. So the only two possible values for p is p equals 7 or p equals 8. In the final part of this question, we're dealing with a modulus. If you want to explore more questions on this, go to Algebra 15 on the website, and all the questions there are about modulus equations. In this specific question, we're asked to find the range of values of x for which the modulus of 2x plus 5 minus 1 is less than or equal to 0. When you see a modulus equation like this, your first instinct should be to isolate the modulus on one side of the equation. So I decided to add 1 to both sides, and at this stage, when you have a modulus and an inequality, there are two different ways of eliminating it. But because there's an inequality there, I would always suggest to students that the easiest way to eliminate it is to square both sides. So you square the left-hand side and you square the right-hand side. Once I decide to square the left-hand side, you can ignore your modulus signs, they're gone. If you multiply 2x plus 5 by 2x plus 5, you get 4x squared plus 20x plus 25. If you, multi if you square 1, you're left with 1. Now I have an x squared, an x, and a number, so you bring your 1 across and you have a quadratic equation. So I have 4x squared plus 20x plus 24, which simplifies down to x squared plus 5x plus 6. So ultimately, I need to investigate when is this quadratic less than or equal to 0. So from here, my goal was to sketch the quadratic curve. In order to sketch the quadratic curve, we first need to find the roots. In order to find the roots, I, I, instead of an inequality, I just make it an equals. The only point of what I'm doing here is so that I can draw the graph. So I ignore my inequality, I let it equal to 0, factorise and solve my quadratic, and my two answers were x equals minus 3 and x equals minus 2. So I know the quadratic crosses the x-axis at minus 3 and minus 2. 
I drew a rough sketch of my quadratic here. But once I have my sketch drawn, I now draw my attention to this line again. I want to know when is the quadratic curve less than or equal to zero. It's less than or equal to zero when it's below the x-axis. This curve is below the x-axis in between the two roots. So when x is greater than or equal to minus three, but less than or equal to minus two, the curve is below the x-axis. And that's my final answer, the range of values for which the modulus of 2x plus 5 minus 1 is less than or equal to 0.